um, Chris D'Elia was actually on the Adam Carolla podcast talking about being cancelled. Very, very interesting. Um, for some reason, the clip's only got 25, 6,000 views, which is weird. Maybe because it's on a smaller channel in terms of Adam Carolla's um, clips channel in general. But they should have way more views considering how big of a star Chris D'Elia is. Or maybe, much like a lot of these comics, he maybe bots his views because a lot of these guys do bot their views to the point where there's not a real fair, accurate representation of what their actual viewer base is like if you look at their YouTube videos. But when you see them be a guest on other shows, you see how not popular they actually are. But anyway, this is a Chris D'Elia on getting cancelled. Gonna play and obviously pause it a couple of times here and there when I think I need to comment. During your set on stage uh -huh. at the Improv, you're talking about being cancelled. Yeah. And I don't know if people really know what happened to you yeah. or how the cancellation worked. I don't even know. I don't know either, honestly. Uh, mm. I, you know, I was like, should I talk about it? Should I not? And then honestly, uh, it's just kind of been my life over the past two and a half years, you know, and it's what I, you know. First of all, take your hand away from your mouth right now, this instant. If anything, it looks like you're being protective and you're afraid of what you might say. So you're hiding your words or you're being deceitful and you're hiding behind your hand. Either way, put your hand down, talk clearly to the microphone. Oh, uh, think, think about a lot. So I'm like, if it's me, it's me. You know, I, you know, my standup was always, I always wanted to be, uh, I always did the standup I wanted to do, you know, like people are like, People, I, I come on stage, I'm very energetic, I, I talk about what I want to talk about, and sometimes I get into trouble. I always thought if I was going to get canceled, it would be because of what I said. And, um, and, uh, and, it, and it wasn't, and I just thought that, you know, I would, I would, be, I would be that silly, you know, comedian for as long as I could until, like, I didn't want to be the, the 55, 60-year-old comedian that was talking about the same stuff I was talking about five years ago. Brutal to say that on uh, to fucking Adam Carolla. Brutal. And I was like, how do I make that? Uh, how do I turn that into? How do I evolve that stand up? And uh, the world kind of did it for me, man. They were. No, 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 no. He was never going to evolve that stand up. That's the funny part about it. Like he was always what over the age of thirty or maybe close to forty, and he always had this really weird kind of um fuck boy type comedy style which didn't make any sense because he's a grown man but also made some sense because it resonated with younger girls who obviously attended these shows to the point where other comedians would say as a thing that chris was a murderer you always sold out tickets but they always will say that it's quite interesting that chris was one of the only comedians who you'd look at his audience and there'd be a bevy of like young hot girls basically trying to get his attention which never happens with comedy because they're all middle-aged overweight men so the fact that he was able to do that clearly got to show that he had an appeal with the youth them and he was definitely marketing or positioning himself as the kind of kids comedian type of thing to the point where I think he was Justin Bieber's favorite comedian for a long time. So I think that change that he's talking about was obviously forced and it obviously forced him to kind of pivot his personality. But I think the biggest issue with what happened with Chris in general, aside from the allegations of being a diddler, right, which isn't, you know, let's see you know what i mean but in general right the bad thing for him i think which really fucked him up was the incongruency the lack of the lack of uh the lack of a common thread tying his public persona with his private persona it was so kind of different and out there than what he presented himself to be on the podcast that it kind of set people it kind of made people feel a little bit weird right because he comes across really fun loving and cool and chill but then when you read the accounts of the women or what they accused them of doing he kind of sounds like an absolute douche and really sinister that's the only issue that he had basically and i think that was basically what embarrassed him to the point where he didn't want to come back outside you know and live a like somewhat normal life he didn't want to do it anymore do you know what i mean that's the issue he's basically having in that regard so i think that's what basically fucked him in that one um, because he wasn't really honest like that. We're just like, uh, you know, we cancel you. Mm. And I had to sit and think about, uh, you know, myself for, uh, you know, uh, two and a half years. And now I'm talking about what I still want to talk about. How did the cancellation manifest itself at least? You know, what's funny is, well, he never really offered a counter explanation as to what actually happened. I think a lot of those guys don't, which is basically why 
some people just jump off and stop supporting them. But may explain that might be actually a good tactic to go forward. Even Brian Callan didn't really offer an alternative explanation. He just said everything that happened was consensual. So basically, they all mis misremembered, but he remembers it being consensual. But with Chris Delia, he never really explained why what happened, what hap why what happened happened, or basically offered his point of view of the story, like. Did you legitimately text somebody when they were, you know, when you thought they were young, but then they were 17 and then you said you'll come back when they're 18 and on the day they turned 18, you messaged them. Like, did that actually happen? Uh, do you know what I mean? And why did it happen? And was it something that happened often? Whatever it may be, he didn't really offer an explanation behind that whole thing. Was it a hoax? Did they make it up? We don't really know. At least the part you know, because there's parts you don't know. What do you mean? I mean... There's a part where somebody says, you're fired from your job. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's another part where you just don't get invited to a party. Oh, oh, and you don't really know. You'll never know what you didn't get. You don't know get. that yeah. you didn't know or yeah. that you didn't get the audition for right. the film. Or, you know, there's a mm. quiet part, an invisible part that you do not know. I guess I don't know. I guess I don't know. But the thing I do know is the thing that uh, is important to me and the thing that you know, I didn't know was the most important was my family and the people that uh, do support me. Boo, absolute lies. These niggas, these motherfuckers don't care about their families. They don't, let's be honest. They only care about their families once they get cancelled and once things start to go south. Same way these comedians like, what's his face? Um, the guy from fucking, uh, what's his face? Ari Gold, whatever the actor's name is. He's somebody who got cancelled, he got accused of being a sex pest and shit, and then he pivots into stand-up and tried to pretend like he was an actual legitimate you know, stand-up comedian who always had the passion for doing it but never got around to doing it. I was on theatre, I was doing stages, all this nonsense. He tried to make an origin story for himself, but essentially, if he never got cancelled, he would have never got into stand-up or did it professionally or gone full-time with it. But because he needs to you know, ensure the bills are paid and look after his family, especially with the Hollywood roles drying up, there was no better thing to do than to go and stand up because you can essentially create your own create your own destiny by basically going on stage and telling dick jokes. So this whole premise he's got about being a family man only happened legitimately because he got cancelled. But again, spare a fool for the wife, man. Um, she's a real one. The fact that she would be willing to still marry this guy despite everything that happened goes to show that she's really in it for the love. She's definitely not in it for the money or the clout because he doesn't have any and he's never going to get it back really because Hollywood is quite brutal that way. Once you kind of, you know, cross the line in that regard, that's basically it for you. There's no coming back. Uh, and believe in evolution and believe in, you know, um, uh, growth. Uh, those people are important to me. And I always thought my job was the, was the most important thing, uh, period. You know, I thought, and I, and I told this when I got, when I got with... Uh, I don't believe him. I don't believe him. People that say this sort of stuff a lot, I don't believe. Um, they're usually trying to overcompensate and they're mostly trying to convince themselves because he would like nothing less than to go on triple runs and be hanging out in different places and meeting up though, you know, out allegedly meeting up people and whatnot. He would obviously love that, but instead you've got to pretend you're a family man and race back home on a Saturday or Sunday night, whatever, to go see your kid or take them to school in the morning. Kristen, who's now my wife, I, um, I was like, look, you know, my most important thing is my job. And she was like, you know, I get it. Um, I, I'll be along for the ride. And I had this whole way of living that I thought was the right way to do it. And it wasn't. And when the shit hit the fan, um, I was like, okay, you know, maybe my priorities are fucked. I thought I knew better. And but to be fair to him, he doesn't seem like he's lying. He's kind of saying the roundabout way. I'm guilty of what they said I'm guilty of, but I had to get myself back up again because I need to do what I need to do. But he's not really making excuses. He's not trying to, you know, reverse rationalize everything or try to offer up an explanation for this or that. He's just basically saying, yeah, it is what it is. It happened, but I'm working myself now and I feel like I'm in a better place. Um, and now, I mean, you know what? I, I watched, a. there was a thing when I was, I, I must've been a teen and I was watching Dennis Miller do an interview about stand up and they were asking him, uh, what do you uh, love more being a stand up? What do you love most in life? And he said, being a dad or something like that. And he said, I would give up stand up. I wouldn't do another show ever again 
uh, if, if it meant not being with my family. And I was like, wow. And as a teen, I was like, I would rather do stand up, you know, because that was what I wanted to do. I wasn't thinking about having a family. And I just kind of used that in my life as the most important thing I wanted to do. I wanted to be a successful comedian. And I'll tell you, man, like through all this shit, like I, 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 I understand the other side of it. Like I wouldn't do all I all I want to do is be there with my family and the people that I support and support me. Uh, that's the most important thing. And it took all this to, to realize it. Kind of said a whole lot of nothing about nothing, but you know, again, interesting way to kind of go about doing things. I think in general, he probably messed up by being so quiet for so long. It made him look way more guilty than he maybe essentially was overall, even though the court documents that um, um, I've seen people cover on fucking YouTube were pretty brutal, um, really graphic, really kind of uncomfortable to read and stuff, but clearly something occurred with the ladies in question. Whether or not it was all the truth is one thing, but to kind of dismiss the whole entire thing, you know, is really, really folly in that regard. But at least he's out there, you know, talking about the stuff and basically being honest about it and trying to make amends. It feels like, or try to basically fix his own life, not even if you can make amends, trying to fix his life um, in his own way. So that makes it uh, somewhat admirable.